Welcome back in this third video of our Data Science Project series. Let's work on cleaning and exploring the NBA Games dataset. At the end, we'll have a dataset that's ready for modeling. Hi everyone, I'm Justin. Welcome to Justin to Data, where data science materials are shared and made simpler for you. Let's go to the Jupyter Notebook. In the previous video, we've pulled the NBA Games data through a Python package. So we have this Pandas data frame called Games with NBA Games data from 2020, January 31st. We've discussed the data set a little bit. Now let's explore it further. First, let's print out its columns attribute. You can see that there's many columns. We won't be using all of it for our project, so let's filter for the necessary ones. Say games equals games itself, filtering for a list of columns. So definitely team name, game ID, which can be used to identify individual games, then game date, since we'll be creating features based on time, matchup, since the column tells us where the game was played at, WL, win or loss for the game result, and plus minus, which shows how many points the team won or lost the game by. Great. Now we have the data frame with all the columns we need. We can print out the new data frame games to take a look. So each row of the data set records one team in one game. For example, this row is about team LA Clippers playing in this game with the game ID here on the date June the 4th, 2021. It was played at DAL, which is Dallas. The result is W, which means the LA Clippers won. And they won by seven points. There are a couple of transformations we need to do on this data frame. But here's how the final data frame should look like. We'll have a new data frame with each row recording information for one game. And it'll have two columns. One column records the result of the game, which is the target of our prediction. The other column is a feature, perhaps a score statistic indicating how strong the participating teams are against each other. So we can use this score statistic to predict the result. Let's get started. During the process, we certainly need pandas. So let's import pandas as PD. Then let's print out the info summary of games. It has 3,278 rows and six columns. For this non-null counts, you can see that there's no missing data. One thing we need to fix is a D type of the column game date. Right now it's of the object D type, so we should convert it to a date time format. Let's reassign games game date column as pandas to date time function of itself. Now this column is of date time type. Then we'll sort the data frame games by this game date column. The default is ascending order. Let's reassign it as games. If we print out games, you can see that it's sorted from the earliest date of 2020 January 31st until the most recent date. Now, based on this data frame, we'll start creating a new feature. For each team, we want to measure for how well it performed before the current game. As mentioned previously, we'll use the plus minus column. It is a score the team won or lost the game by. So it's a measure of their performance compared to its opposing team. To be more specific, we'll calculate for each team the average plus minus score within the past 30 games. Let's write the code. It'll be a little bit complicated. We can do games data frame group by the column team name, since we want the calculation to be for each team. Then filter for the column plus minus since the calculation is based on this column. Then we'll use a transform method to apply a function for each group, 
for each team. We'll define a simple function with lambda x, say x dot rolling, with argument of 30. This rolling method calculates statistics based on a moving window of a fixed size, which is 30 in our example. And since we've sorted the data frame according to game date, this 30 will take the previous 30 records or games. At the end, we'll add the mean method to calculate the 30 games average plus minus score. So again, this long code is for calculating for each team the mean plus minus score within the recent 30 games. One more thing to add, because the rolling window includes the current row of data, so this 30 will include the previous 29 records and the current record. But we want this calculation to be strictly based on the past data, so excluding the current record. What we can do here is to add within the rolling method an argument of closed equals left. So closed at left, but open at right. This will include the 30 records before the current game, but not including the current game. Now it's all good. It's okay if you find it a little hard to understand, but we'll print out an example soon. Let's assign this new feature as a new column to games and call it average 30 plus minus, since it's the average plus minus score for the past 30 games. Now let's print out an example. Games filtered for games team name equals Toronto Raptors. We'll print the first, say, 35 rows of the data for this team. So these are the data all for the same team, Toronto Raptors. The game date is sorted from earliest to latest. This column is a plus minus score. And this column is the average 30 plus minus. For example, for these first 30 rows, the new feature is showing all NAN values. That's because we're asking it to calculate the previous 30 games average. But for the first 30 rows, there are not enough records before them for the calculation. Say for the second row, there's only one record before it. Well, we set it to must have at least 30 records to calculate this statistic. So it's NAN. Starting from the 31st row for the Toronto Raptors, there are 30 games played before it. The new feature was calculated as a value of 7.1. This is the mean of the previous 30 games plus minus scores. So the average of the 30 records from 25, 5, all the way back to 13. Similarly, this value of 7.6 is the average of the previous 30 records from 28 to here, 27. I won't verify the calculations, but feel free to check if you'd like. So we can consider that for these earlier games, there weren't enough historical data for prediction, so that they're all NAN. Well, for this game, the average 30 plus minus of 7.1 is a measure based on its previous 30 games, so we can predict the current game's result based on this measure. Next, we want to consider the home advantage within the games. Here's a quick explanation of home advantage. For an NBA game, the location of the game is always at the home location of one of its teams. The team that gets to play at its home location is called the home team. And the home team tends to have a significant advantage over the opposing team. And that's why we want to consider this factor into the game results prediction. How can we tell which location it's being played? We can tell by this matchup column. For example, among these games for Toronto Raptors, the matchup column always starts with TOR or Toronto Raptors. Then it either says at or versus another team. When it's versus, that means the game was played in Toronto. For example, this one, the Toronto Raptors, was a home team in this game. When it's at, the game was played in the other team's location. For example, this one, it's played in DET, or Detroit, so Toronto Raptors was the away team. So we can have a Boolean series 
say, call it msk equals games matchup column, and apply the string method contains at. That means the game is played at another location. So the team for that record was the away team. Otherwise, it's a home team. We'll use this Boolean series to separate the games data frame into two, one called games away and the other games home. So games away equals games filter for MSK. Again, when the matchup column contains at. The team was the away team in that game. The game's home is when not MSK. If we print out the shape of both data frames, you can see that they're the same, since each game has one record of home team and one matching record of away team. We can also print out them to verify the split results. So games home, the matchup column, all have versus, means that these teams are the home team in these games. Say games away, the matchup column, all have these at signs. These teams are the way team in these games. So games home has all the teams playing as a home team, while games away has all the teams playing as the away team. To combine information for a single game, we can join these two data frames together using their common values of game ID. Let's call the new data frame games merged. So pandas merge function games home games away on the common column game ID. When the game IDs are the same, the two teams played in the same game. So we'll also give it suffixes as underscore home and underscore away. This is because games home and games away are using the same column names. So adding the suffixes will help us tell the difference between them. Let's print out the new data frame to take a look. For example, this row is saying for this game, with ID as this, the home team is a Dallas Mavericks. The result of this home team is that it lost. It has an average 30 plus minus score of 2.53. Within the same game, the away team is the LA Clippers. The result for the away team is that it won, and it has an average 30 plus minus as 5.4. This is great, but to feed the data into a model, we want one single statistic to reflect the difference between the two participating teams. Maybe we can use the average 30 of home team to minus the average 30 of the away team. Let's do games merged and create a new column, average 30 plus minus diff for difference. And set it as the average 30 plus minus for the home team minus the average 30 plus minus for the away team. This feature combines the performance of both the home and the way team, and it reflects their relative performance. So we can use this feature as the only feature to predict the result of the game. You can come up with more features, but I'll keep things simple here. What's the target for the prediction here? We can either predict the home team's result or the way team's result, which is the same thing, since it's either one team wins or the other team wins. Let's do the home team's result, which is a WL home column. So from games merge data frame, we only need two columns, WL home and average 30 plus minus difference. Since there are some NANs, we'll apply the drop NA method on this to drop them. Let's name this new data frame games model. One last thing to transform before fitting into this model is a WL home target. It currently has values of W or L. It's better to change them to numerical values. 
So let's do games model WL home column as itself, map from W to 1 and L to 0. So now games model has two columns. One is a target of prediction, WL home, with one being the home team winning and zero being the home team losing. And this is the only feature which shows a difference between the average 30 plus minus between the home and the away teams. Now we're ready to build the model. Stay tuned for the next video. There's more to the data cleaning and exploring. To learn more, you can check out our Python for Data Analysis with Projects course, where there are detailed explanations about common data cleaning problems and exploratory data analysis. I'll put a link in the description below. Did you learn something new in this video? If so, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just click the subscribe button below this video right now. If you're interested in more data science tutorials and courses, please head over to our website, justintodata.com. Thank you and see you in the next video.